Welcome, you're at Reef Review Time with Imperial, and today's review will be Power Book 2 Ghost Season 2, Episode 7. Let's get into it. So, this was a good episode, and right off the back, the episode starts off with Lorenzo and Drew going to kill Miko, and after they killed him, uh, his number two stepped in and um, Drew pretty much he was on full long go mode and he went to the female that was there with Miko and told her you didn't see us and so he was going to let her go sort of like what Ghost did in um, the earlier seasons um, it's like season one when he let that female go however Miko's number two, that's great to be the number one, pretty much uh, killed her. And Lorenzo said, rule, never um, tie up all loose ends, don't leave a witness. So it went from there. You had Tariq meeting in the chapel with Tamika. Now this scene, I don't know if they're trying to uh, turn Tamika into Tariq's. I mean, um, Tariq's version of Proctor, what Proctor was to Ghost. I don't know if they're trying to turn her into that. That's what it seems like it's leading up to because he's confiding in Tamika about everything. He confided to him that he killed his dad. Now he's confiding in her that he didn't kill the cop, but he was forced to kill the, the professor. Like, he's just a man to everything. So I'm just like, come on. Are you serious? So... Um, nevertheless, she's telling him, well, listen, like, you're not a bad person. You can still have your whole life ahead of you. You could do five years in jail. And I'm going to tell you what McLean will tell you. Just take a deal for five years. Give us the um, person who actually killed the cop. And you'll take five years. And you'll have the rest of your life. Tariq's saying, well, if I snitch pretty much. My grandma and my sister lives are being jeopardy, and basically they won't be safe. And so from there, you know, Tamika just had this look on her face. So it does have another scene with Tamika. She meets up with Sax, pretty much tells Sax, you know, Tariq didn't kill the um, cop, and it's, you, you know, you're his counsel. It's your job to get him off or whatever. And he's pretty much saying, you know, well, you know how I feel about Tariq. She like, yeah, but you still his counsel, and he's really a good kid, or whatever. So you go from there to meet meets up with McLean, and pretty much tell McLean that he had his alibi. He seen Paula the night that the cop was um, killed. McLean, Paula was who he was sleeping with last season. However, he used to work with her, and she dropped him. She met up with Tariq to let Tariq know that McLean was dirty, pretty much. And she, Paula didn't like McLean no more. So McLean reached out to her to find out if the alibi was true. Alibi was true. However, the time still don't match up. He had enough time to meet her and then still get back with um, the kill Ramirez. Meanwhile, you had Tate meeting up with Tyreek, pretty much telling him, I need that evidence. He pretty much told her there's a picture of Sweeney and Weston uh, Braden's dad is in the picture with blackface so Tariq told Braden he needed that picture Braden said no I can't do that because that's going to fall back on my family and so Tariq said no nah, I need this picture you always saying you got to stand up you don't like what my um, your family stand for or whatever we said yeah but that's still my family I can't do that so nevertheless the night of Jabari's um, dinner, Tate was able to get in. And Tate pretty much went up to breast, um, Braden's dad, pretty much told him that, hey, listen, some stuff great come out on Sweeney. And I'm letting you know, convince him to step down. And I hold all obligations when I get in that role. Pretty much... Braden's dad said, you know, I don't like um, P. 
people who's trying to uh, bribe, and he said pretty much uh, F off. And so, of course, Tate used this uh, reference of blackface to him, and that's when he know he knows he knows about the uh, picture. Meanwhile, Braden was at the dinner table just listening to his whole family talk, and he got exhausted about them hearing and how they move. So it pretty much seems that I think Braden going to just give up the picture because he's tired of how his family moved. Nevertheless, it went from there at the dinner. Uh, you can see the tension between um, Carrie and Lauren, and the rumors were circling on the campus that she was sleeping with a student. She pretty much bailed from the speech and went to her office, started crying because her career would be over. Meanwhile, Tate came and pretty much told her that the reason why he went into the dinner is because he wanted to pretty much um, get back into politics and basically told her, like, your story's not over. Hint, hint, foreshadow, foreshadow, your story's not over. So we all know Tate is having a, a spinoff show of his own book, um, Power Book 4, called Influence. So... Hint, hint, this is the foreshadow. I don't believe Carrie is going to get killed. I think she's going to move over to that uh, influence with Tate somehow. So there was another foreshadow where Lorenzo finally approached Monet about the exit strategy. She talked about Zeke, and he pretty much said, I'd never work for another man. And so I'm going to hold this family down. And he said, I'll die for this family. So, hint, that was a foreshadow. Uh, Lorenzo was on his way up. You already see the moves being placed. You see the evolution of Drew, where Drew going to take the lead position. You also see he was still messing with Ev. Um, Detective Whitman showed up to Ev's room dormitory to speak to him. And he kind of brushed him off. Ev knows too much. So you see the foreshadowing. Drew, I mean, Ev is Drew's weakness. Ev is going to be out of here. He was walking up on Ev where he was going to do it because him and Kane got into it. And Kane pretty much told Lorenzo that Ev is his weakness. And he, you know, he knows too much. He's a loose end. And then uh, Drew pretty much said, I'm going to handle it once Lorenzo got involved. So he's very ox uh Ev, but then Ev text him, and then that kind of throw him off. So that's the foreshadow that Ev is out of here. His days are numbered. From there, you also had um, McLean getting in his car, and Kane shows up pretty much confirming he pretty much did the killing, and Tariq need to go down. McLean explained to him, if I get Tariq off and get you off, you and Tariq are pretty much in this together. And... uh when he pulled off, he told um, Kane pretty much, say hello to your mom, Kane. Because <laughs> Kane was bashed up or whatever. So he knew who he was. And uh, Tariq did the trivector. He did it. And uh, they wrote Tariq in to do the trivector that, you know, people watching the show that basically said it should be done. He did the trivector. Finally, they wrote it in the storyline. So he Lauren shows up to apologize, letting him know that he didn't, you know, apologize for not supporting him. And he pretty much at this point, his McLean and them told him he needs to stay away from her because you know she um, she knows too much. So he was kind of standoffish. Diana showed up right at that moment, and so of course Diana is going to St. John's. And uh, Monet gonna say to Diana, basically go go uh, Red Storm, like um, Carrie said that statement to her when Zeke was around. Nevertheless, uh, Diana appeared. Tariq let her in and pretty much told um, Lauren, "Listen, my lawyer told me I need to stay away from you anyway." And so um, he closed the door in her face and she stepped off. Meanwhile. He just jumped on the bed like, die, what's up? You know what I'm saying? You know, and she pretty much said, you know, uh, things going on with my family, whatever, whatever. And now I'm getting to go to school. 
He was like, Word, oh, that's what's up. You know what I'm saying? Well, you know, she's like, Boy, I gotta go to St. John's. And he said, Well, that's still fly, you know what I mean? So she said, Nah, I wanna be up here with you. And he looking at her like, What? And he was like, Pretty much like, Nah, you know, we can't do whatever, you know, your, your mama uh, uh, kill us or whatever. And she was like, Well, y'all not in business together. So that was the reason why she said that. And so. That's done. And so she kissed him. I said, the boy, got the, he got the trifecta. You know it's going to go down. So he let her know, like, two things. And then he was like, make sure. You sure? But he never got to the second thing because she kept kissing him. And so he knocked it down. So he knocked down Effie. He knocked down Lauren. And he locked down. He finally knocked down um, Diana or whatever. So, uh He's in there, you know what I mean? He did the trivecta, and I'm glad they wrote that in, you know what I'm saying? Because that's how uh, somebody will move or whatever. So you know it's going to be problems now. Because, of course, you know, if he told Diana for her own personal whatever, don't mess with a guy like Tariq because you want somebody to be special. But she was kind of saying that because she don't want the competition or whatever because she wants Tariq for herself overall. Meanwhile, Diana always been into him. So, Courtney Kemp said in one of her uh, lives that in this trivector going on, this triangle, you have um, Diana, who's too hot, um, Lauren, who's too cold, and Effie is just right. So, you're going to be wondering how this is all going to play out, especially when... Diana and Effie, when they both know that they've both been dealing or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So, we're going to see how they write that in. And it's a great way how they can write that in or whatever. Nevertheless, what else happened in the episode? Okay, um, Mecca, he shows up to Zeke while Zeke was playing ball, shooting hoops. And basically told Zeke, you got one foot on longer than the other one, don't you? And he was like, yeah, well. He said it runs in the family. And Zeke looking at him all strange. And he pretty much confronted him. Told him who he was, Dante Spears. And pretty much, I'm your dad. I didn't know you existed pretty much. Now I know. And Zeke, like, my dad died. And he was like, well, you, your name is Ezekiel. And he wrote the, um, showed him a tattoo he had. And he said, ask your mom about me. Now he doesn't know that Monet's his mom. He's thinking his mom from down south so pretty much uh he had a date with the um to not a date he had a meeting to meet with the agent so monet was calling him he didn't answer so she showed up to stanfield looking for him and when she found him she's like why you ain't answer the calls and then he pretty much packing the stuff like now nah, i got a roll i gotta speak to my mom she told him that he met this guy said it was his dad so she said it was, Basically forced him to sit down, told him, your dad is in jail. I was promised by your mom to never say nothing or whatever. You got to be careful because he, this guy popping up saying he's your dad. He's just out for the money. So uh, he believed her for the moment. So right now he believed her, but you know that's going to fall apart. So meanwhile, M Monet shows up to... Um, Mecca's house and pretty much confronting him while you go back on our agreement you know what I'm saying and he said cause basically because we had an agreement you went back on it and so she pretty much told him Zeke don't need you I don't need you either so she trying to get back into her relationship with the family Lorenzo or whatever and Zeke going to the league and so Mecca's not feeling that. So, of course, he did a meet with Lorenzo and pretty much said all his weight going to go to Lorenzo. And Kane knew he was out the game at that point. So, he feeling some type of way. And that's what strong him and Drew's fight scenario. So, overall, that covered pretty much um, all the bases, on um, the most important bases in the um, episode. And this was a decent episode. So, uh, this uh, series... Season is moving and progressing. Subscribe to the channel, like the video. Till next time.